Divide and Conquered is back. This is episode three. We'll be going over the Biden investigation and is it payback for Israeli sanctions? Israeli spies Alexander Smirnov and Gal Luft. Bibi uses APAC to control Democrats. Cambridge Analytica's Israeli accomplice. Media bias and how to find good sources. So why did the special counsel cite Biden's poor memory as the reason for not being charged? Because there were material differences in the way Trump handled the classified documents, who was hoarding them and trying not to give them back, versus Biden, who returned them right away. So there are huge differences. So who is Robert Hur? Well, Robert Hur was appointed by Donald Trump in 2018. And he was also aide to the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein. And he oversaw the appointment of the special counsel of Robert Mueller. So who was Rod Rosenstein? Well, he also defended the controversial whole report. And why would that be? Maybe because of sanctions. Israeli sanctions against spyware because he was the lawyer for NSO group. The same group that was accused of spying on associates of Jamal Khashoggi. And go over here, U.S. blacklist Israeli firm NSO group over spyware. And it says the company knowingly supplied spyware that has been used by foreign governments to maliciously target the phones of dissidents, human rights activists, journalists, and others. The firm and another Israeli company, Kandiru, acted contrary to national security or foreign policy interests of the United States. Wow, so that's a pretty power a pretty powerful motive of why you see the classified documents case and how they try to say he had this poor memory. Now, Biden, yes, he's old, but he seems to have people in place that are doing what needs to be done, and that is putting sanctions on Israel. And here's another one where the UK and the US both sanctioned Israeli settlers for human rights abuses in the West Bank. Okay, and it was in response to unprecedented levels of violence by settlers in the West Bank over the past year. Remember, there's no Hamas in the West Bank, it's only in Gaza, including those who aggressively harass or intimidate Palestinians to pressure them to leave their land. Said Israel's future, says Israel's failure to act has led to a near total impunity for the settlers. So it wasn't just the UK, it was also the US who sanctioned the settlers. Now we're going to move on to Alexander Smirnov, the FBI informant who lied about Biden's ties to the Ukrainian energy company and had high level Russian intelligence contacts. But the thing is that that's not really being mentioned in a lot of these stories was that he was a citizen of Israel and he only came to the United States 16 years ago. So here we have the ex-informant accused of lying about Biden said he had Russian contact, had Russian contacts. And so remember the thing about Russia and Israel, they work together. So always keep that in the back of our mind. So when we're talking about Bibi, we are talking about Putin. They work together. So let's continue. So the federal prosecutor's procur- the federal prosecutors portrayed the former informant, Alexander Smirnov, 43, as a serial liar and capable of telling the truth about even the most basic details of his own life. So the former FBI informant accused of making false bribery claims about President Biden and his son Hunter, which were widely publicized by Republicans, claimed to have been fed information by Russian intelligence. In the memo... Prosecutors portrayed the former informant as a serial liar incapable of telling the truth about even the most basic details of his own life. 
but Mr. Smirnov told federal investigators that officials associated with Russian intelligence were involved in passing a story about Hunter Biden. So those disclosures, including Mr. Smirnov's unverifiable claim that he met with Russian intelligence officials as recently as three months ago, made him a flight risk and endangered national security, Justice Department's officials said. The Mr. Smirnov had been held in custody in Las Vegas, where he has lived since 2022. Let me go further down. It said prosecutors did not specify which story Russian intelligence is said to have fed Mr. Smirnov, an Israeli citizen. So it's fascinating. All these Israelis, they try to pass off as Russian spies, right? And again here, Alexander Smirnov is an Israel-U.S. dual citizen. He's only been in the United States for 16 years. I don't know how he became a citizen so quickly. Well, I think we know. Okay, so th these were all lies about Burisma, that it was fed to them by Russian and Israeli disinformation. And many of the, the AP reports and others make no mention of his Israeli citizenship, or that he holds an Israeli passport in addition to his U.S. passport, which was seized by federal authorities. Here's another one they try to pass off as a different spy, right? Gal Luft was acting as an unregistered agent for the Chinese government. So they're trying to pass him off as a Chinese spy. But the thing is that he is, again, a dual Israeli and American citizen and a co-director of the Institute for Analysis of Global Security, who was charged with violating Iranian san sanctions and making false statements to federal agents. Wow. Okay. Another one. So instead of this time being passed off as a Russian agent or spy, they being passed off as a Chinese spy. And the thing about the Israelis is that they have a long history of passing off technology to China. And again, U.S. Israeli citizen charged with arms trafficking, acting as a Chinese agent. I mean, this is getting a little ridiculous here. Israeli professor arrested on suspicions of armed trafficking to China and Libya. Well, at least, at least the Israeli press is a little bit more honest about it. I will give it to them. So here's an article from October 13th, 1993. Israel selling weapons to Chinese, U.S. alleges. So in a move with the potential to harm U.S.-Israeli relations at a sensitive moment in the Middle East pro peace process, the United States has accused Israel of selling advanced military technology to China. Wow, okay. And again, she, Putin, and Netanyahu work together. They're the ones who want to form the multipolar world. When I talk about the New World Order, it's the multipolar world. So the Chinese probably also hope that formalizing such ties will foster an environment in which they can recoup some of the costs they have incurred in more than a decade of acquiring defense technologies from Israel, a cost that may be several billion dollars. And this was a what, what year again? 1993. And here's a more recent one from 2013. Report. Israel passes U.S. military technology to China. Secret U.S. missile and electro-optic technology was transferred to China recently by Israel, prompting anger from the U.S. and causing a senior Israeli defense official to resign. So, so this is a common practice of the Israelis passing on technology not only to China, but also to Russia, our enemies. So now I want to bring your attention to the fake whistleblower Brittany Kaiser and how she hid Tal Hanan's Team Jorge's role in Cambridge Analytica. And not only were they hiring 
Tao Hinan, but they also hired Black Cube. And here's another article down here in Haaretz. Trump, Facebook, Cambridge Analytica, and the appearance of 1984. And so a lot of the media, they have the, their go-to is for Russia, but they completely hide the role of Israel. And Haaretz is really good at about exposing Netanyahu and the Israelis' role in stealing our elections. Let me go over here to the post. So it's an Israeli security expert behind worldwide election manipulation efforts. Israeli security expert and founder of the D Demomam International Tal Hanan found to head a team working to manipulate global politics. And this was February 15, 2023. So this is what we've been dealing with. We're trying to fight with one hand tied behind our back. That we're not being told the truth of everything that's happening. And it says here, the Guardian reported that a team of Israeli operatives has been working under Israeli security expert Tal Hanan, a 50-year-old former Special Forces operative and CEO. So he is also Special Forces. So let's remember Cambridge Analytica, Psy Group, Tal Hanan's ties to Steve Bannon, Robert Mercer, Joe Zemel, Eric Prince, Council for National Policy. That all goes back to Carbine, Black Cube, and all the way down to Benjamin Netanyahu. And then they're also still working with the Black Rifle Company crew. So when you're online and you're seeing these people knowing that, that they are working with the former head of product and the head of marketing for Cambridge Analytica, and now they're working to get one of their guys elected to a border district, you start asking yourself, are these the people we want representing us? People who manipulate our elections? Okay, this is really weird. Let me go back into login. What the hell? Don't let me log in. It has my name. And let me get the rest of my story. What is going on? Oh my god, that is so weird. Why is it doing that? Look right here is my my name. What is going on? Okay, <laughs> this is weird. And I don't think this is how Red's doing this. Why I say that, right here, because Israel's communication minister threatens Haaretz should us penalizing its Gaza war coverage. So after the Likud minister, Shlomo Kahari, proposed financial penalties against Haaretz for what he termed lying defeatist propaganda. Yeah, I don't think this is Haaretz doing this. Wait. What is going on? This is so weird. I've never had, this has never happened before, ever. It wouldn't even let me touch the, oh my God. What is going on? That's crazy. Okay, well, <laughs> ah, that is fat, that's crazy. I'm glad I'm recording this. Okay, Haretz, you need to um, get your house in order and whoever is getting into your website so I can't. <laughs> Because I am a paid subscriber. Okay, so this is really weird. Every time I try to sign back in, it won't let me. So it says, hi, Deanna. And here's my account. Let's go into login. Well, I guess now is a good time to transition into media bias. So here is the former CBS chief, Les Moonves, who had a step down. He was very pro-Trump. But he was also the grandnephew of David Ben-Gurion. And who was that? The founder of the state of Israel. So I don't think we're going to get a lot of good news coverage from our left-wing media here in the United States. 
And it's not just CBS, it's also CNN. So here is the intercept. And it says CNN runs Gaza coverage past the Jerusalem team operating under the shadow of IDF censor. So it says all CNN stories relating to Israel and Palestine has to go through the Jerusalem Bureau. We're not going to get unbiased coverage of Israel in any of these left-wing major publications, such as CNN, CBS, or any other ones. And here again, CNN and the IDF censor. And this is a, a publication I really do like, is Ryan, in Ryan Grimm. He's, he's pretty good. So the thing with the media is left-wing tends to lie by omission, especially about the role Israel plays. So they will be happy to fluff up China and Russia, but they always tend to downplay the role that, of Israel. And right-wing media will just lie to you. They don't care. So this is why the Israeli press is really important because they tend to be really on top of these, these topics and issues. And even here, it says that these, the Israelis are rejecting Netanyahu. That doesn't mean they are embracing left-wing views. So they're, they're pretty honest about what's going on. So I am, I am a big fan of the Israeli press. Now I want to get into how APAC is being used to attack our democratic institutions. So a pro-Israel groups are denounced after pouring funds into a primary race, which were being used to defeat a Jewish congressman, all because he criticized Israel's treatment of Palestinians. Okay, so this is the American Israel Public Affairs Committee attacking a Jewish congressman who's criticizing Israel. I don't know if people say it's a problem, but I do. Let's keep going. And again, they attack the squad. They're trying to purge critics of Israel from the Democratic Party because they're trying to quash the dissent in Congress against Israel's apartheid regime. Let's go further over. Okay, why is it doing this again? My screen's going black. Okay, there we go. Interesting. Okay, let's continue. So there sure are a lot of Republican billionaires funding the Democratic primaries. I wonder why. And so here we have, so the field is basically set, but before the Trump versus Biden rematch begins in earnest, there is still a bunch of highly contentious primaries for the House and Senate left to be decided. On the Democratic side, none will draw more attention and money than the campaign to knock the squad, the faint young progressive legislators of color out of Congress. And it's all being funded by Rep Republican billionaires and mega donors. So yes, your Democrats are being funded by right-wing billionaires. And let's keep going. A slam for endor endorsing Republicans who refuse to certify Biden's election. Says rival J Street says, including 37 Congress members who wouldn't confirm the president in a list of 120 endangers American democracy. Wow. Okay. Let's go further over. Apex insurrectionists for Israel. So that's who funded all of the people who didn't want to have Biden sworn into office. Apex. And keep going. It says APEC is again siding with the enemies of democracy, this time in Israel. So we need to talk about why this is an issue. Because we can't have foreign interest in our politics. And here's Haaretz again. APEC is the pro Netanyahu anti Israel lobby. So even they're admitting that APEC is working for Benjamin Netanyahu, which is right here. It's own stated goal by becoming a long arm of Benjamin Netanyahu in American politics. And it says APAC members stood at his side in his fights against former President Barack Obama, including when Netanyahu addressed Congress in 2015, just two weeks before an Israeli election. And this is actually illegal. Let's go over here. 
applying for APAC to register as a foreign agent. Because it's actually illegal for foreign countries to be in our elections. And let's read into this article a little bit. It says, APAC is the leading force behind the Israel lobby during the recent years by the ascending Christians United for Israel. Other Jewish pro-Israel organizations are niche affairs. And what's interesting, is there any place but APAC that not only gets Mike Pence, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, Chuck Schumer, and Nancy Pelosi in the same room, but also gets gets to hear them in near total agreement. Okay, there's no other issue you have near total agreement for both the Republican and Democrat Party except for it except for APAC. Okay, this is an attack on, on democracy, on, on our elections, because they are able to primary people that go against the Netanyahu regime. So right here, but there's something strange too about APAC. Consider Vice President Mike Pence's remarks last year's conference. It says, every freedom-loving American stands with Israel because her cause is our cause. Her values are our values. And her fight is our fight? Really? Israel's fight is our fight? I don't think so. I don't think any other American thinks that. Here, how can America's representatives declare that any other country's fight, or even when it's close to us as Israel is, is our fight? Its cause are our cause. Its values are values. And says, and this is a, a Jewish website. This is a Jewish news or news article talking about this. And says it is precisely this kind of over identification that Washington warned about in his 1790s, the seventeen ninety six farewell address. He says. A passionate attachment of one nation for another produces a variety of evils. It says sympathy for the favorite nation facilitating the illusion of an imaginary common interest in cases where no real common interest exists, which trades the former into a participation in the quarrels and wars of the latter without adequate inducement or justification. Why? Right? This is a Jewish website, news article that is telling you this. And so we need to start enforcing our Foreign Agents Registration Act right here. As it is a violation of the law to allow a foreign government this kind of fluence or lobbying in our, in our country. And it says right here, th this law applies to Canada as much as it does to Russia. But it also applies to Israel. And, and it needs to start applying. And so how does APAC get away with it? It's because its founder came up with a legal loophole by which APAC is defined not as a lobby for a foreign state, but for Americans who support that state. It's a critical distinction that makes APAC's dominance over U.S. Middle East policy possible. But now we know that this is a pro-Netanyahu. They are working directly for a foreign government. And so these laws need to start taking effect. And being forced. And it says down here. It says today. Netanyahu and APAC. Which has kept the United States government. Firmly behind Netanyahu's policies. Have turned Israel into a source of dissension. Even among American Jews. So people want to sit there. And blame the Jews. When they're like no we're done with Israel. We're done with APAC. It needs to go. So, yeah, this is something that we need to start talking to our representatives about. Start enforcing the law. And it says, no, APEC is not a pro-Israel lobby. It's the Netanyahu lobby, and our laws should treat it as such, for Israel's sake, even, even more than our own. So, yeah, this is an excellent article right here. And I would have gotten more into my Haaretz articles, but it wouldn't let me in. So, hey. So all sources will be available on the Substack. Once I get done, I'll upload it and I'll attach it here. And then you will get all of it right here. And as you can see here earlier, I was able to copy and paste some of the important parts from Haaretz. So... We'll see how that works out. All right.
DC out. <laughs>